Many of these students do not complete their courses. And as a result, because they haven't completed their hours, they are not eligible to be tested for a state license. As a result, they still owe the money to the bank. The bank has already paid the money to the barber shop or the salon for the tuition for the student. But the student, for the rest of his life or her life, is going to have to pay that money back. If the student decides to get a degree from a barber shop or their education from a barber shop or their education from a salon, they will be paid minimum wage and only minimum wage. The salons and the barber shops usually charge more in tuition than a professional school does. You're better off going to a, a regular professional school where you learn to take your test, where you have more control, your environment is better controlled, and your teachers are on you at all times. Whereas in a salon or in a barber shop, you can watch them work and you can wash a bunch of heads. And that's about all you're going to do the whole time you're in there. You're not going to experiment. You're not going to be coloring hair. You're not going to be curling or styling hair or cutting hair. You're not going to be doing all of those things. Somebody is going to say, see, this is how I do it. And that's it. But you're not really going to be getting the education that you need if you go to a professional school. It's better to go to a professional school and get your training there. The bank calls me and I am on a list as an inspector. So I go into barber shops and beauty salons where they are teaching and training people to become barbers, cosmetologists, and in very few cases, estheticians. Usually estheticians go to a professional school to get their license. When I go into these shops, I'm inspecting as a representative of the state board. And I have to be honest, most of the places I turn down because of the fact that their, their operation is too dirty or they don't have a proper place for the students or they don't have on their walls, they don't have their licenses on the walls. Let alone, you know, the state board has rules and regulations. If you walk into any salon or any, any establishment where they are paying for services, it is required by the state board of cosmetology that you have on the wall all the rules and regulations for the state of California. And each state has its own rules and regulations with regard to that. Here in California, we're very, very strict. Cleanliness is the number one important item in all of these situations where it's cosmetology or barbering or any, any of those arts, because they are arts. But in any of those, you have to take 20% of the time, and that has to be book learning. And so the student needs to have a place to learn. If there isn't a designated area for the student to learn, book learning only, which has to be separate and away from any, any place where they are practicing on clients those students have to have 
their own special place. But in that special place, there have to be licenses on the wall of all the teachers. There have to be rules and regulations from the state of California on the wall at all times. So when, when these are not there, I cannot pass the school. When these are not there, I cannot tell the bank, go ahead and give them the money. And so the schools lose out on their money and their funding for the education of these students if they do not have a clean and regulated environment for these students. And right now, there are many salons that are trying to make a quick buck and they're bringing people in as students, but they're not doing the job right. So no bank is going to loan the money to the student, which means pay the tuition for that student to the actual barber shop or, or salon. And if they don't get their money, then there's no school. So that's what happens.